All right, today we're starting a new series where we're going to be going over day one S&D strats going into the MW3 season. Not really giving too much away. This is all stuff that was done all the way back in 2009. It's just standard S&D setups you'll see at the beginning of the S&D tournaments. Obviously, it's going to evolve from there to fit the new game. So these are standard setups that you can use with your team, you know, whether it's just playing regularly search with your friends or going into those beginning S&D tournaments or wagers. So we're going to start off with invasion s d defense obviously just a standard spread just so you're getting all the info that you can and making sure you have all the lanes covered so excuse the quality here this is mw2 4v4 vod that i found uh, from game battles that was all the way back in 2010 so it isn't 360p but we're going to be taking down the basics because you can still see what the players are doing obviously you probably know this name nate shot right over here this is uh, one of his old game plays but this is a really nice spot right off the break and we're going to be talking about all of the spots that this team is using just to you know play pretty conservative towards their first defense here and uh, really break it down for you so you see the three players and what they're doing you're going to see the point of view of the player all the way towards the b site and now i'll break it down so you understand what they're doing and why they're doing it and what you can do to utilize it uh, for your advantage when you're starting to play invasion search so like I was saying before, a good spot by Nechat, he's using this cross spot to completely get any wrap back towards B, see if they're going towards B, making sure that if they're coming through DVD, he can shoot them as well. And he's prone so he can't be seen by anyone that's coming out from the River Street or from Red. Exile here, he's playing a really important spot because the mid control was really important on this map. And what he's doing here is he's contesting anyone that might be trying to peek out a mannequin at the start. Sometimes people will try and go to the mannequin room over here and try and catch a first blood. So he's trying to contest that uh, really early and he doesn't have to really worry about his right side. So where the bomb is over here to the right and where that exit from the cafe is because this is right at the start of the round and defense actually has the advantage towards getting towards that cafe. They can get there faster. Plus this guy in the river, if he goes even deeper Deeper, he can see if anyone goes instantly to that red room and so they can actually you know contest it in case someone actually was pushing that so he has this whole river street and then we'll go to the last player who's playing solo towards the b-bomb and yeah that's last liar he's playing solo towards the b-bomb he's basically just laying there uh, honestly i don't think that'll work in this next sort of game you know spots like this nowadays probably won't work just because you'll just get fully out teamwork by anyone pushing towards b-side and your attacks aren't going to be as useful as they were previously like in their older games so any tax that you would use uh, probably would have been able to help you stay alive in this situation but nowadays not so much so and especially if you had some tax towards that mid area you know where exile was playing he can really help out towards this side as well so since tax aren't as good as they were you know back 13 years ago uh, this kind of spot you can probably have to play a little bit safer here and I'll show you some ways to do that so we'll go with the top-down view as you saw there Nate shot holding this cross from this court spot he can basically see through DVD and through this entire cross. So anyone that might be trying to, you know, go through mid or go through DVD or even cross, you know, either around here or around over through the deep way, he's going to be able to see that entire cross. So really overpowered position to get some really good info on the offense and what they're trying to do on their side. And then you have your other mid player who's going to be basically, you know, the crux of the entire setup because what he's going to be doing is making sure that he stays alive because what he has to do is make sure that he holds the mid control, which is really important for this match specifically. Uh, but he can also help out the a push or he can help out the b push so he is that main connector for the two sites so it is imperative for him to be staying alive and what he can do is help both sides at the same time and just making sure that everything is stable throughout the round then you're going to have one of the solo lane guys play over here either with a sniper or with an ar and previously back in the day what players would do was you know go off spawn and class switch so they would start running a lightweight marathon making sure that they get to the spot and what they can actually do is make sure that they get the cross into red uh, for any Anyone that might be going from the offense you know from this mannequin room into red so what you can do is actually see if anyone's going inside of red and call that out to his teammates towards the mid side so that they can play for it now it was actually big on the defensive side is you would actually have the timing especially with a sub uh, to get up into red and actually chow out of here so before they were actually able to get inside red themselves the offense was probably you know stuck around outside a mannequin while this timing was happening so you could actually chow out of red like this and see if you can quickly pick out anyone that might be trying to rush into 
red. So if you want to get a little risky and get aggressive, you can try that out. But if you really just want to play conservative, you know, capture all the bases, make sure that you're holding all the lanes, play this spread setup uh, and have the two guys mid instead. And then the last guy is going to be towards this B side. So uh, what you can do is you can play around towards bomb. You can play in this corner, play towards the tank, play behind this tank or even snipe, you know, back over here. But you're going to be playing solo towards this site. But before back in 2010 days, you know, you can just play super ratty over here, try and get one kill finesse out because hey, what you can do is you know, stunt delay their push for anyone that was over here by using your attacks and you can call out to your teammate who's over towards this mid side. He can actually bank a stun or any of his attacks uh, over towards this wall and you know throw it over the wall and he can actually hit anyone towards this area as well. So what you can do is you know really use your attacks that way. But in my opinion, you know, I'm not sure how viable this will be nowadays. So uh, probably just playing super safe, you know, maybe inside this building, maybe sniping over to the side. But if you're a sub and you want to just get super aggressive, want to take that chance that they're not going towards that B site, you know, coordinate with someone to watch over you and try and push up, you know, again, one of these buildings, try and flank around. And what you could do is actually go over towards, you know, this side, there's a little garbage heady over here and you can actually see the entirety of their, you know, alternate mid over here and, and see if you can pick off anyone that's rotating or just staying over there playing safe and really collapse their setup if you can get aggressive towards that side. But that's again, if they're not pushing B at all. So like I was saying before, mid pressure on this map was just is super important just because it was you know the connector to both the a site and to the b site through this connector so as long as you had this map control you can really you know take your pick option off to either site but if you really have that map control you can dictate the round completely from that so that's why you would usually have those two guys towards the mid side and it was just really important for these guys on the defense to play with each other and make sure that they're actually you know communicating adapting adjusting to what the other player was doing so that you're always communicating always knowing what the other player is watching so so you can adjust off that make sure you're watching whatever else because let's say this guy river notices that one guy had pushed through red quickly that's going to force one of these mid guys to turn their attention towards uh, this a doorway now because you know they don't really want to just get picked off for free on anyone that might just be exiting red you know so that's going to be the job of either this player to start you know let's say using these walls to start snaking over and making sure that he's watching this while uh, let's say this player on the trash heady now backs off towards you know this little corner here make sure that he has the entirety of anyone that might be pushing through mid so he has this push will also be completely free of any line of sight from anyone exiting a or trying to plant towards this way and actually still holding this connector side so that they're not giving that up as well or another thing you can do is if you know this guy has already got into red and start pushing you instead of playing this trash or tank heady you can go over to the court with your teammate so like let's say he's playing this way and you're playing this way now and what you can do is really use these headies to your advantage i think these these headies are going to be insane in this game. We'll see if you can actually wall bang them. But as long as you have, let's say, like a trophy here, if you could put a trophy mid, you know, that's going to stuff all the attacks that enemies are going to be throwing, trying to get that mid control. So I think trophies are going to be absolutely huge, especially in this mid side. And if you can put like one in the corner right here and make sure that you're crossing this with your teammate and have this full X cross setup so you know everything is covered. So you know you still have your full on lanes covered. But in terms of mid control, you're still holding this cross setup. So if anyone comes out DVD, this way let's say so this guy playing the nature spot is going to have the info on it and can turn instantly for that make sure that he has that connector for you while you're still holding this a side uh, for him so you're just working off of each other like that the synergy between these two players is going to be super important and for these guys on the outer lanes you know they're playing safety watching over these lanes making sure that they're holding these lanes down for the rest of their team but they have some freedom to them so again like i said before you can either snipe or use an air over here and if you get some info that they're going you know aggressively towards the B site you have the option you can either wrap back and help out your team from the back or if you want and play a little bit more aggressive and try and catch someone off guard uh, you can start pushing through uh, towards this way and try and catch anyone that might be rotating uh, but that's a super aggressive play if you want to do that obviously if you have a sniper don't go uh, pushing through towards their side you'd be better off wrapping back and for this guy playing solo towards his B site you know usually in back in 2010 you'd have the guy playing with a sub you know in one of these corners around the tank and just pushing through if he didn't see anything towards the B side and trying to help out this way like I was saying before but if you're playing like
like with an AR, you're playing over here or you're prone inside this building, uh, you're better off just wrapping back to one of these little headies over here and at least watching over towards the mid side for your team and helping him out that way. So you do have options when it comes to that, but I think it really depends on what gun you're using, how your play style is, or it could even depend on what the enemy team is doing at the time and info that you got previously in the round. And to hone in specifically on this mid guy, just because he is really important, and, you know, actually staying live and actually benefiting this entire setup because everything pretty much falls on him. If he dies, the setup is completely broken. So what you saw in that vial was Exile playing on top of this garbage can, watching over into Mannequin. It was just really common for people in Mannequin to try and chow out of that for first blood to begin with. So he's trying to contest that and he's able to do this and not worry about his entire right side because of what we were talking about before with this guy watching towards the riverside he will get that info in case anyone pushes in through red or pushes around through the river and goes to this side towards the site so you can rely completely on this solo lane player you know again that's why i called him like a safety he's pretty much just watching over everything making sure that he's calling out to his teammates what info he's actually getting and relaying any enemies that might be pushing in quickly and let's say he does get the info that someone's pushing through red or pushing through the outer river like this you know that's on these two players now to start actually adjusting their setup so let's say they're pushing around to the river this guy is now playing you know let's say court over here watching over this heady and now his teammate is still either watching mid or if they just want to adjust their setup completely and this guy now goes over towards here and he plays this spot while well, this guy was on the garbage heading now plays back over here and watches this push through so again if they're playing one position their teammates adjusting to whatever they're doing and they're making sure that everything is still covered and they can actually help each other in those moments so again that was the standard default spread that you would have on this map the one two one one player playing the solo a side one player playing the solo b side and then the two players mid so just like anything i expect this to evolve quickly so again this is just to be used probably day one you know first few weeks of actually playing tournaments or wagers or whatever this is a standard setup that you can use and actually act off anything on that you're going to have everything covered but once again it's going to evolve based on what players start to do how the new movement is you know this was a 2009 based strat so it could technically change but you're still having all the lanes covered and it should work out for you guys as long as you're continuously adapting and staying alive towards this mid like i said before and actually effectively communicating on these side lanes so making sure that everyone's doing their job but also being a cohesive unit and playing off of one each other that's going to win you the games so thank you guys for making the end of the video i hope you guys enjoyed this one i hope you guys learned something and actually can utilize this going into mw3 and i'll see you guys in the next one